What's up, everybody? We are so glad that you are here joining us tonight. Uh, we're trying something new tonight, and I'm really excited about it. Uh, I'm Chris Cummings, the youth pastor here at The Village, and we are pumped that you're joining us. We hope that you hit that share button and invite some of your friends tonight. We're going to be having a discussion uh, with a group of high schoolers about what it's like in coronavirus and talking about life and faith and how do we talk about our faith. And so we're going to have an awesome conversation. I actually sat with sat down with them earlier this week. And so I have that uh, for us here in just a second. But I'm so glad you guys are here. I'd love for you guys to comment and say, um, how are you feeling about school starting? Whatever that means. Because um, it's school, homeschool, school, like at home. All the, It's just confusing, right? It's online. It's what it, we don't know. So, but no that we understand that this is crazy and it's weird, but we're here for you and we love you guys and we miss seeing you in person, um, but we're really excited to just connect with you. So I have a few fun things at the end of this video to talk about, uh, including launching of some new things. So make sure to watch it to the end. Also, we want you to be a part of this conversation. So as you hear them engaging and discussing, Add your comments as if you're part of this discussion. Uh, if you hear something that you agree with, type that in. Be like, yes, this. Um, we would just love for you guys to be part of that too. So we're going we're gonna to be messaging right along with you during this. Uh, so I'm really excited to introduce you uh, to a group that we're calling the Influencers. So check this out. What's up, everybody? I am excited to introduce you guys to kind of a new format that we're going to be doing this fall. Uh, we have invited some of our high schoolers, we're calling them influencers, to be a part of a special discussion group where we're going to talk about topics of life and faith and how they intersect, and then have you guys continue those discussions. We hope that these spur you on into deep conversations of what it looks like to follow Jesus and why that matters here and now and today. So, I want to spend a couple minutes just introducing the team of influencers. Hello, my name's Kerrigan. I'm going into 11th grade at Nolansville High School. I'm a big introvert, but once I'm comfortable around you, I can be very social. I'm passionate about music and caring for everyone around me, and I cannot wait to see what this new season of The Village brings. My name's Andrew, and I'm going to be a senior at Nolansville this year, and I am a very social person. I love hanging out with people. And so in the rare times I'm not hanging out with my friends or anybody, you will probably see me either running or playing video games. Hi, I'm Hannah. I am a junior at Nolansville High School. Kind of unlike Kerrigan, I am a big extrovert. I love being around people. I'm a big people person. I'm also a dancer. I've been dancing since I was five. And yeah, that's a little about me. Hi, uh, my name is... Eli, I'm going to be a senior at Overton High School, and one interesting thing about me is that I'm adopted, and I am an extrovert, not as much of an extrovert I, if I have not, like, if I'm not comfortable around you. I don't know, it's like 50-50. Hi, I'm Kevin. I'm a senior at Overton High School, and two of my big interests are arts and music, and I play oboe and hope to do that professionally someday. Hi, my name is Madeline. I'm going to be a junior at Nolensville High School. I cheer. I'm very social. I love talking to people. And if you can't find me at my house, I'm probably at Sonic. I've worked there for a year. And if I'm not working, I'm probably hanging out with Hannah at Sonic. So I'm just going to start asking some questions. The question of the day, school's starting back, and it is weird. How are we feeling about that? I'm feeling pretty anxious about school starting just because I'm the type of person that likes to know what's going to happen. And that's never the case right now. So. I'm really eager to figure out at the end of the two weeks if we get to go back. I really want to go back to school on campus. Um, I'm actually kind of sad that school is starting online. My senior year was really looking forward to that, and now it's kind of... Yeah, I agree. Um, as a senior, I was really looking forward to going to the first day of school. I know, at least for me, school is going to be a lot different this year because I'm actually doing the online option like the full online for the first semester I've decided to give it a try and I'm kind of excited for it I'm also kind of 
nervous because it's definitely going to be a bit of a change. I'm definitely nervous, but also grateful that my school is doing online for the first month because I think I'd be like extra anxious and stressed going back to in person. It's scary, but it'll work out, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, I definitely agree with Kerrigan. Like, I want to know what's happening, but like, we don't, and it's just very like, it's stressful. Then it's also like a mystery. So, like, I'm excited and like, I want to be surprised by it. So, like, I'm just kind of thinking of it that way. If, like it's gonna be like a whole thing so we're just trying to stay positive that's a great way to think about it like oh, what's next yeah <laughs> it's like as if elf was going to high school and he's like oh <laughs> ooh, online school what's that it's like a it's like a mystery film but it, it's a good way to look at it like this summer was different so what what was good what was weird I think the weirdest thing about this summer was when our family decided that it was okay for us to go to the stores. And the first time that I went to like Kroger and everyone was wearing a mask, it was something straight out of like a horror film or something. It was odd. And the good part about this summer, I had a lot more time to do stuff that I normally don't get to do. You know, for me this summer, it was, it was really different because me and my sister usually go to the summer camp every year it's an eight week day camp and this year was like the first year and I think 10 years that we haven't gone to that camp which is really sad but I'm also kind of grateful for it because it's one like this summer has been one of the few summers I've been able to like spend my time with my friends and I've been taking advantage of that a lot. This summer was very disappointing because I had plans this summer to do stuff I really wanted to do. And I had got a car. This is the first summer I would have a car. So I was really expecting to go places with my friends. I've had a lot of time to hang out with my family, which I hadn't been doing during the school year. Yeah, definitely. I've been working um, a lot. It's like almost 30 hours every week, which is like too much for a high school kids sometimes but once school starts I think it'll be easier to like manage all of that but definitely this summer has been like fun I got to like get closer with all my coworkers. uh it was all right it hasn't really like felt like summer and so I'm like kind of in denial that school starting in like less than a week because like I couldn't really go many places I was mostly like stuck at home but I guess the good part is that I've been able to like practice over more and work on art and like pick up new hobbies like embroidering. So that's been really nice and spending time with family. Um, summer's been kind of bittersweet for me because it was a super long summer. It was like, what, two months extra, I think. Like I said earlier, I love to hang out with my friends and stuff, but I haven't really done a ton of that. More recently, I have a little bit, but especially for the first few months of summer, I was just kind of like at my house most days doing nothing. So I'm with you guys. I don't know if you feel like this, but like there's just always this like undertone of like, like just meh. um sometimes it rears its head a little more than others um but like there's always a little something going on well it's like everything you do there's like the undertone of the pandemic like oh my gosh i'm going to the beach but i have to social distance oh my gosh i get to go to a graduation party social distance. always the pandemic yeah especially like with working and everything it's scary because, like, I'm, when I'm car hopping sometimes, I can, like, go out to, like, an average of, like, 500 people a day. Like, you have to think about how many people have been exposed, and it's just, like, scary sometimes. And I've gone to the beach twice, and, like, we did everything right. Like, we drove down there, didn't, like, stay with anybody else, and just, like, kept to ourselves. But it's still just, like, scary that I could just, like, be there and you just not know for two weeks. It's always in the back of your mind. We're starting this group. We're going to be talking about faith and life and how it intersects. So I'm, I just kind of want to pose the question, like, how has faith been important to you up till now? Why has it mattered? Following Jesus is important for many reasons, I think. And one of the reasons is because if you are not following Jesus and actively listening to his, like what he wants you to do, then you have no purpose. And when you have no purpose, you kind of feel empty. And Jesus is the only one that can make you feel fulfilled. I think faith is a really important part of Christianity because faith is not knowing all of the answers to all of your questions. And I think that's part of the reason faith is so hard is because when you have true faith, you're going to do things that 
you don't know what you're getting yourself into or you you're not going to know everything that's going on and because of that it's really hard to follow him faith has been really important in my life because faith and life are very stop and go and unlike life where there are a lot of places where you can try to start faith has like you just go to Jesus and you get to start and then you find your way there are a lot of other people that can give you wisdom on how to find your way back because they've been through exactly what you've been through and I have a bunch of personal experiences like I get off track in life and and in faith I go back to church or I go on a retreat or something and I fix my relationship with God and coincidentally my life gets back in order as well so it's my way of just kind of getting all of my sanity back in so it kind of gives you like a new way of looking at everything, kind of a perspective, yeah. For me, throughout your life, you build all these relationships with your friends, family, people you meet, everything. And those relationships affect your life, and some of them you'll remember until the day you die. And so that stuff's really important. But the most important relationship to me is the one that you build with Jesus, because that relationship, it, it, it brings you further than death. You will, you will have that relationship for eternity. All of your friends and family, you love them to death, of course, but that's as it goes. You love them till death. For Jesus, you're loving him forever. It has always been this place where I have found purpose, where I found like belonging and like the identity of like who I am. Um, and it seems like those are the three questions we all ask all the time. Like, who am I? Where do I belong? And why am I here? It's been the one thing that's actually helped answer all three of those this idea of identity of like it changes our foundation so here again you were kind of talking about that like it reorders how you see things uh, gives us this idea of like I am a beloved child of God like Jesus is enough so I don't have to be and then I find this idea of like purpose of like why am I here so Eli you talked a little bit about this and it gives us a perspective of like we're joining in God's bigger story of like setting things right again so like the story isn't about us. It isn't about Eli. It isn't about Hannah. It's about God. And we get to be a part of that. The biggest story ever told. So that gives us this giant purpose to be a part of. But the belonging piece, I think, is really, really important. And for me, faith has always been there because it's provided the church. And the church at its best is a group of companions and guides helping lead us in our faith. So people who have been there before and are helping push us further and further and further, and then other people who are kind of in the same space as us walking with us. So these companions and guides have given us this place of belonging in the community of faith known as the church. And so I, I follow Jesus because it has helped me answer those questions of who am I, why am I here, and where do I fit in? And so that has really been impactful for me. And I think that's and so in this, I've been wrestling with this passage from Romans 12. So I wanted to read it to you and share a couple of thoughts, and then we could talk about it a little bit. I'm going to read it in two different translations because I like the two different ones. So therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is true worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and pleasing and perfect will. So there's this idea of like a living sacrifice, that there's something about here and now of how we live our lives differently. And then it says, and the way we do that is by not conforming to what the world tells us we're supposed to be, but to what God's calling us to. Like that identity piece of you're a beloved child of God who God has called you to help partner to set things right again that's who you are, living into that changes things, and you're able to notice God things versus world things when you do that. And then there's this piece uh, when you read this in the message uh, translation that really stood out to me. Uh, so here's what I want you to do. God helping you take your everyday, ordinary life. You're sleeping, you're eating, you're going to school, home or at school, and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for God. Don't become so well-adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, 
fix your attention on God and you'll be changed from the inside out. So there's this idea of the everyday ordinary life. Um, often our culture has faith over here and then life over here. And so you have Sunday morning maybe, and then everything else. And like you have your church self and then you have your school self and your family self and your everything self. But there's something about faith that's supposed to undergird or be foundational to everything else of who we are. Um, and so this everyday ordinary life is really exciting because it's this idea that faith is a part of everything. Everything that we do should be founded in this identity of following Jesus. So that's been something that's been standing out to me. So I'm curious what stands out to you guys. Because I have been struggling with keeping my spiritual life and my social life separate. And I decided that I wanted to intertwine them. So every night before I go to bed, I pray and I thank God for everything that he's given me in hopes that that makes me more self-aware when I am living that through my day that I don't have this because I bought it. I have it because it's a gift from God. That's such a great perspective also of just like, are we actually creating this relationship with God or not? Mm -hmm. Like, is it just a Sunday morning thing or is it like a relationship thing? Uh, just like with friends, you get to know your friends more the more time you hang out with them at Sonic. Mm -hmm. Work on the street. Why don't, why don't we do that with God? Like the more time we spend with God, the better we would get to know who God is and God's heart for the world. And then we can follow God better if that makes sense i think that um like especially like in today's like world and like what's going on like god and religion is very situational like you use it when it's okay for you and you use it when you need something and you're not using it all the time and it's very like oh i want this i should pray about it, it should be like no like i thought about this today i should pray for this person you need to like just not do it for yourself but for others too you need to just incorporate it in like your everyday life not just when you want something I like that because that eliminates this idea of like Santa God, right? Yeah. Like, dear God, this year I've been really good. Can I dot, dot, dot? Yeah. And I think that's really interesting to like make it more of a shift to relationship in like the everyday ordinary as opposed to uh, a list making. For me, I think it's difficult to like recognize in the moment that I need to be focusing on my faith. Like usually I only think about it like, when I go to sleep because the day's over and it's like not in the moment I have time to reflect on that I don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing because I think that if you're still reflecting on it at the end of the day then surely you still like progress in your faith but I think for me I need to like start focusing on like realizing it throughout the day so I can work on it and grow in like the moment. I know for me it's just it's really easy to get kind of distracted by everyday life especially nowadays with everything that's going on, it's easy to get distracted by the chaos in the world and kind of forget to focus yourself on your faith and on God and you know, remember all the good things. It's easy to get distracted by. Yeah, I don't know about you guys, but once I turn my phone on, I somehow lose like two or three hours. And I'm like, well, what, what happened? It's been hard to have faith in my everyday life just because... I'm fairly new with my relationship with Jesus. My mindset used to be that my identity didn't really have anything to do with what religion I followed because I had it in my head that it didn't necessarily matter what I did because I could always go back whenever I was done being that person and he would forgive me and everything would be okay. And then I found my way back and I'm seeing that my identity has it's not intertwined with my relationship with god and so i'm having to switch all of these habits that have been influenced by culture nowadays and change the way that i interact with people interact with myself how i speak well, like yeah i agree with kerrigan i really used to and sometimes still do think of god as an insurance policy like, I can do whatever I want, and then he'll just forgive me. I'll be like, oh, it's okay if I do this. I mean, God's going to forgive me. It's whatever. But it's not how it works. Because if you're truly following God, then you're going you're gonna to make the good, decision, even, good decisions even in the hard times. Because mm -hmm. think about that, like, in a relationship with a friend, being like, well, good old Billy, he always is, like, forgiving. 
So yeah. I'm going to screw him over like over and over and over and over, but he's fine. Like that makes you a terrible friend. <laughs> yeah. But sometimes that's what we do with God. And that's like completely missing the point. If you see God as uh, a relationship and not an insurance policy, like you said, I think that's a really good switch. So yeah, guys, I totally see that. That's awesome. So at school, you kind of have to know, you kind of have to know the boundaries because you're not really supposed to go around uh, pushing your religion out to people. Um, some people might may take it offensively, so you kind of have to be careful with what you do. But there's definitely ways that you can get you can show your faith in school but there's also a lot of kind of restrictions or if not if they're not restrictions you feel like there are socially just social pressures and you don't really want to take the step out there and put yourself out there showing everybody your faith or your belief in god or anything because you feel like it'll put you in a weird position socially faith is such a vulnerable topic that when you're at school and you're around these people that you're not that close with, it's it's difficult because you're seeing directly into your heart when you're speaking about faith. And it's like, am I really ready to let you know that much about me yet? And I think, Andrew, that's what you're talking about is like, when I share my faith, am I now the jerk who is the Christian who's telling everyone they're going to hell, which is not how we're supposed to share our faith. And yet that's how it, we're worried about, right? Like Jesus or else burn. It's like, well, or there's <laughs> Jesus is the way to life, which is a little different. Um, but yeah, no, I totally get that idea. At like, at my schools, I know they've always kind of pushed and like told us that like your religion and school are separate. Like those aren't supposed to like cross over. Like I remember like teachers telling us that at times that like school and faith are separate they don't mix like you don't talk about faith at school so then like like being older now it feels it's like kind of hard to talk about your faith at school because for me it's been like in my head like you don't talk about it at school it's separate and so it's just kind of like that's just something that's a little like weird it's just kind yeah. of hard to get out of that mindset that's been like taught to you and remember that like oh you can talk about it at school but like Andrew said you don't want to offend anybody because there's a lot of people that'll get offended and but I don't want to go around just like annoying everyone with like just talking about Jesus I think there's a certain way you can do it I don't want to be known as that kid because usually people don't want to hang out with those type of people I've been trying to make it more actions before words so you you act the way that Jesus has he wants you to act and how you're supposed to act love everyone um you know show Jesus his love how he's changed your life through your like how you've changed as a person because of him. and when you show that people are going to wonder why you act like that how you change so much and through that they're going to come up to you and ask what how is that possible and that's when I think you use your words. Uh, I like what Eli said about actions versus like speaking about it because personally I have a hard time like talking about my faith with people unless I'm like close with them. And I know that like we shouldn't keep our faith just to the people we're close to. It should be like something for everyone. And I think showing that through actions is good. And it's like comforting because sometimes I like freak out. I'm like, hmm, I don't know if I'm doing a good job of like sharing my faith with other people. I don't know like how to do that. But I think actions definitely are, is a good place to start for that. I think it's interesting that you're all kind of hitting this point of like, it's really awkward to talk about our faith, right? And I, I'll own this with you guys. I don't think the church in general, like not even just our church, like all the church has done a good job of teaching us how to talk about our faith in a way that is just like conversational of like, hey, guys, this really cool thing happened to me this week. God did this amazing thing. Well, what if it was just like part of our normal conversation? Just like, guys, this really cool God moment happened today. And like, you don't even like make a big deal out of it. Um, but like, we have never really talked like that in church. Like we've never done that. So part of what we will be doing here and in our small groups is learning how to do that. Learning how to just talk about faith as if it's part of your conversation 
not as if it's like, okay, now we're going to talk about Jesus. Like you don't have to like change the topic or switch the page or be like, now my church hat. Uh, but actually like, what does it actually look like to just talk about it? Like it's a normal part of your life and your everyday ordinary life. So we're going to, we're going to learn how to do that together. Cause I don't think adults are good at that either. Being a part of this like redemption story of setting everything right again. Ultimately, Jesus was that way of resetting everything and beginning this new creation. Um, and then was a part of this community called the church that we are a part of to join in that mission to help set everything right again, knowing we're not alone in this, but we have each other as well. Wow. I don't know about you guys, but that was awesome. So I'm really excited as we continue to have these conversations. Uh, about what we'll talk about and lean into this idea of how do we talk about faith? How do we actually live this idea of following Jesus in our everyday ordinary lives? Um, so we're going to be having some of these conversations on a regular basis and you guys get to sit in on them. And then uh, we're going to be launching small groups on the 23rd of August. So you have two weeks. Uh, several of you are already on in small groups and we're just going to keep... Um, building those up. And we want you to invite your friends, uh, people that you want to walk alongside with, uh, people that you know need a place where they can belong and be themselves and grow in faith or maybe be introduced to faith. Uh, so we want you to invite your friends to those things. Uh, but maybe you're watching this and you're not a part of one of those groups. We would love to get you in one of those groups because that's a place where you get to have discussions just like this one. Uh, in fact, we have a few who have shared their stories about how small groups have impacted them. Check this out. I really love the aspect of small groups because I was so intimidated in going in, into a big group of all of the grades and going to like a small group where it was, it was only girls and only people my age. It made me feel like so much better about getting to make more friends because if I wanted to talk, it wasn't in front of like 30 people, it was in front of like seven or eight. And they were the most welcoming, like so understanding. And I just felt like I wasn't alone and they all understood what I was going through. And they have been with me through every step of the way and have never made me feel like I was alone and they were always there for me. It's such an unbreakable bond that you have with these people and they are with you through everything. And it's just such a great way to make new friends and to meet new people. Well, like I said, if you're not currently in a group, we would love to have you do that. So there are links on our Instagram to jump in those. We'll post a link in the chat. Uh, for YouTube, but we hope that you join us and get into a group like that where you can have people walking with you, where you can have uh, guides and companions, you can have adult leaders that are helping guide you in faith, but also friends who are walking with you, uh, learning how to follow Jesus and live this out in our everyday lives. Well, I'm so glad that you joined us, and as we close today, I would love to pray over you as I know that school is starting, and I know that there is just chaos abounding with that, um, so I'd like to pray for you. So let's pray. God, we come to you exhausted, confused, chaotic, worried, anxious, um, maybe even a little excited, um, and just a lot of unknowns. There are so many different ways that school is starting back, and there are so many things that we just don't know. So right now we pray for your peace in the chaos. We pray that you give us continued direction, and we pray that most of all, that we can lean on you as our foundation, that you undergird everything uh, that we are and who we are and everything going on, that you are with us. When we find ourselves stressing and chaotic, may we take a step back and just rest in you, knowing that you are God and we don't have to be. Be with us in all of this fear and chaos, and may we find your peace and your hope. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I'm so glad you guys joined us, and I hope that you have a wonderful week. Remember, if you're not in a small group, 
uh, fill out that, go to that link and there's a short form and we'll get you guys in a small group. We're so excited for you guys to be a part of something like this. Have a wonderful week. If you need anything, reach out. We love you guys. We miss you. Peace.